Ryan again. Uh, hopefully you've watched the first two videos, so we've seen about percentages and decimals, and we've seen about discount factors. What we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to work out, um, given some cash flows, what the actual uh, return is uh, that balances the money going out and the money coming in. Quite, quite an important part of business, really. Actually, it also is a way of working out what the return on a bond is, so we can kill two birds with one stone, uh, as long as we use a bit of imagination. So basically, if we look at a, a, an investment as maybe buying a machine and then having five years' worth of cash flows, and what we're interested in is what percentage turns that investment against those five years, balances the two off, so we know exactly what the return is for those five years. To rephrase that slightly, if I was to walk into the bond market and pay £96 for a bond, um, and that bond gave me a 5% coupon, and we could look at that in a separate video, but a 5% coupon basically means 5% of the par value, which is always 100, so the bond starts off as 100, so 5% equates to £5. So I pay £96 for the bond, and I receive £5 in return. Uh, this is why the bond yields are going up, by the way. So if you look at something like Greece, the values of those bonds are dropping way, way, way down, but they're still receiving the percentages on the original par values. Uh, so the, the uh, actual return they're getting is much bigger than the original returns of the bonds, the 5% in other words, and we'll see that now. So I'm going to pay £96 for a bond and it's going to pay me £5 a year. What I've already done is calculate two discount factors, just like you saw me do in the last video. And I found out that if I use 10% on this bond, and the bond costs £96 and it pays £5 for five years, if I use 10%, I actually end up with a value of minus £14.99. So that investment, if it, if it was returning uh, £10, or if I required £10, would lose me £14.99. pence. not very good. If, on the other hand, I required a return of only 4%, um, it would have given me an £8.45 uh, return. So that's quite good. So if I was in the market for a 4% return and I did this investment, I would actually be value-adding. I would get more than I require as a return. So that's always pretty good. What I want to know though is where's reality, if you like, or what's the actual return for this bond? Where between the two? So somewhere between 10 and 4 would mean that I was at zero. In other words, um, I was part way between 15 and 8.45. I'm going to show you how to do it mathematically. It's very straightforward. I'm going to show you how to do it mathematically. Then what I'll do is I'll talk about it sort of, if you like, graphically afterwards. You can switch off that half of the video. So mathematically, first of all, I've got to do something that's called interpolation. I need to get from here to part way along such that when I go from 8 on the journey to minus 14, I pass 0. So what fraction is it along this distance uh, that takes me along the same distance here? Okay, I did promise not to talk about fractions, and that'll be the last time I mentioned it. Okay, so I'm travelling this way. So let's have a think about that. I'm travelling from the number 4, okay, some way towards the number 6, uh, sorry, towards number 10, which of course is 6, apologies. So I'm travelling from the number 4 to the number 10, some way along there, but not the whole way. That's the point. I need to stop before I get to minus 15. Let's not lose any more money. Markets have sucked badly enough. So I'm travelling some way along. Well, I'm going from 8.45, some proportion of the total journey. Okay, And the total journey there, of course, is 23. The distance it takes me to get from 8.45 to uh, 15, let's round it up a little bit, from 8 to 15. Okay, from a positive 8 to a minus 15, that distance, of course, just add the two together without the minus sign, 23. So, <coughs> I want to get from 8.45 to 0, some way along that 23 step journey, I'm only going to go 8.45 of the way. If I do that, as simple as that, now you must, you must do the division first, then the multiplication, then the addition, or you'll get yourself in all sorts of trouble, okay? So first of all the division, then the multiplication, and then the final addition, and what you'll find <coughs> is that magically, that will come out as 6%. As simple as that, it could not be easier. So this bond returns 6%, not the 5% advertised there. Okay, this investment, if it was a matter of spending out a million pounds on machinery and getting in so many millions back, would be returning the company uh, a 6%. When we talk about it in terms of investment, we call it the internal rate of return, the IRR, internal rate of return. This project has an internal rate of return of 6%, we would say, or this bond returns 6%. And like I was suggesting to you earlier, this is why they say the bond yields are going up in Greece, for example, 
which sounds a strange thing when you think that the country is supposed to be in financial difficulties. That's because the £100 par value is dropping, 96, 90, 80. The further that drops, the higher this number becomes. Hence, they talk about the yields coming up. That's how you do it mathematically. What you do is you take the lowest percentage discount factor plus the difference between the two discount factors multiplied by the positive present value that you received divided by the total distance between the two present values. It is as simple as that. That's called mathematical interpolation. Nice and easy, nice and straightforward, and uh, uh, something you know, that you can either program an Excel spreadsheet to do or, or just do it longhand. Okay, so that's the first part. You can turn off now if you don't want to see my graphical representation of that. And you might want to stick around. <coughs> One thing I can guarantee you, though, is it won't actually get any more interesting. Um, it's just more uh, uh, explanation. So, another way of looking at this is if I was to say, I am starting down here in the doldrums at minus 14.99, okay, and I'm travelling all the way up to 8.45, and if I was to take that as a journey, start to a finish, okay, of course where I began was at Tempson, and where I am here, of course, was at 4%, and uh, just to try to visualise that, what I'm suggesting is I want to go some fraction of the way along here. Probably not about there, isn't it? So that um, I have got uh, a zero reached. Okay? So I know the zero is here. What I don't know is what that is as a percentage. Hence, I'm able to take that part of this long journey and adjust my difference between the two, difference between the two, and able to adjust by that part of that long journey. That part, that long journey, used to adjust those numbers there, and added to where I began at four, because I have to come in this direction. So that is simply what we saw a second ago, re-explained, with a little path, a little line there. <coughs> so that's taken us through simple discount factors and uh, present value calculations and bond yields and investments. Um, and we seem to have done that all in about um, five or six minutes, which kind of makes you wonder really uh, what I spend most of my time doing. Um, going to look at this again and again, but there's the beauty of the video. Hopefully you can now record, rewind, have a look again if that's not made sense. By the way, whoever you are, feel free to email me uh, and ask me any questions, and uh, I'll, try, I'll try to get back to you and answer if I can. The email address will appear somewhere, or the uh, web link anyway, uh, and uh, always happy to chat, okay? Um, if you've got anything else you'd like me to explain, just drop us a line, and I'll, I'll try and cover that as well. Okay, so have a good day.